Continuing with chapter six, we're going to talk about the normal model. So the normal model helps us fully understand what size z-scores should be. There's no universal standard for z-scores, but one model shows up over and over and over again, and that would be the normal model. So the normal model is a bell-shaped curve. So the distribution of the data would be unimodal and roughly symmetric. The use of the normal model is to give us an idea of how extreme a value is. So it can be used to find how likely, so like a proportion or a percentage, um, it is to have a data value a certain distance from the mean. So the further away from the mean, the more extreme a value is going to be. So a standard normal model is when you standardize the data first, and we will mm, probably never use that, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. The normality assumption tells us that when we're using the normal model, we are assuming that the distribution of the data is normal. There's no real way to check that this assumption is true, so we have to check the following condition, which is the nearly normal condition, which is telling us that the shape of the data's distribution is unimodal and roughly symmetric. And we're going to check this by making a histogram. You could use a box and whisker plot, but a box and whisker plot will really only tell you about symmetry and not necessarily that it's unimodal, so it's safer to stick with a histogram. The normal probability plot is a more specialized display of the data that will tell us if the distribution is normal. So this is found by plotting the values of the data along the y-axis and then the z-scores that correspond to those data values along the x-axis. If the plot is a fairly straight line, then the distribution is normal. If it's not a straight line, then the distribution is not normal. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator, so you will really never have to do this by hand. So let's talk about parameters. So in the normal model, we have parameters. The parameters are mu, that's a Greek letter, it's pronounced mu, it's the mean, and we have sigma, that is a lowercase sigma, again a Greek letter, and that's our standard deviation. So if we take a look at the table to the right, we have the distribution and then the model. So in the distribution, we're using real data. Those real data were observed. We use them to create a histogram. And then we calculated statistics where our center is the mean, and that should have a bar over the x, so it would be x bar. And our spread is our standard deviation, which is s. If we're using the model, we're using theoretical values, which are imagined, and we're using the mathematical curve to show the normal model. We're using parameters, where our center is the mean, but it's mu, and our spread is our standard deviation, but it's sigma. Now, mu and sigma are going to come up again, so it is important that we know that mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. Again, parameters do not come from the data, they just specify a model. If we model data, with a normal model, the z-score is found using the same equation, but instead of x-bar we use me, and instead of s we use sigma. And then the normal model will be denoted with a capital N, and then in parentheses it will give you the parameters, mu, comma, sigma, so it will give you the mean, comma, standard deviation. So whenever you see that, you know you're using the normal model, and they're giving you the mean and standard deviation. The 68-95-99.7 rule. This rule is also called the empirical rule, but if you can remember it as the 68-95-99.7 rule, then you remember what the rule is. So, in a normal model, about 68% of all values fall within one standard deviation of the mean. That is one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. About 95% of values fall within two standard deviations of the mean, again, above and below. And 99.7% of the values fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So this is shown like this. 
So the neural model, again, is a bell-shaped curve. Your mean is right here in the middle, which we're just making zero right now. And then 68% of the data are within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the data are within two, and 99.7 are within three. So let's try an example. Suppose it takes you 20 minutes on average to get to school, with a standard deviation of two minutes. Suppose a normal model is appropriate for the distribution of driving times. How often will you arrive at school in less than 22 minutes? Okay, so I'm gonna have to use the pen, which I'm terrible at, so you're gonna have to bear with me a little bit. So our mean is 20 minutes. I'm just gonna put a two in front of this zero. And our standard deviation is two. So if you arrive to school one standard deviation above the mean, it took you 20, two minutes. Two standard deviations would be 24, and then three would be 26. We're just adding the standard deviation each time. To go down, I'm going to subtract the standard deviation. So one standard deviation less would be 18 minutes. Two standard deviations less would be 16 minutes and three standard deviations less would be 14 minutes, and then you hit every green light and we're speeding the whole way. All right, so back to the question. How often will you arrive at school in less than 22 minutes? So less than is below. 22 minutes is one standard deviation above, so that's right here. And I'm looking for less than that. So I'm going to shade all of this area and that is what I'm looking for. So using the 68.95.99.7 rule, I know that this cutoff marks the 68%. So that's the middle 68% which comes to here. So what is left over? So if we have a total of 100%, and we get rid of 68% of it, we're left with 32%. Now, since the 68% is in the middle, that means that the 32% is on either, covers both sides, excuse me. So that means that this makes up plus this makes up the 32%. So if I cut that 32% in half, this is going to be 16%. And then from here to all the way down, we'll make up the other 16%. So to be less than 22, I have my 68 plus my 16 which means that we will arrive to school in approximately 84% of the time. So the next question is asking us how long will it take you more than 24 minutes? Okay, so I'm gonna quickly change color. What a black. So 24 minutes is right here, and we are looking to be more than 24 minutes. So it took you a really long time to get to school today. Maybe it was snowy. Um, but so this marks the 95%. So again, that 95% is in the middle. So if I take 100% and I subtract the 95, I'm left with 5% left over. 5% cut in half is 2.5. So from here to here, this is 2.5%. And, 
And then same thing from here to here. This is also two and a half percent. So the question asked, how often will it take you more than 24 minutes? And taking more than 24 minutes is going to be two and a half percent of the time. Okay, let's try another example. Each portion of the SAT test is designed to have a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. You earn a 600 on one part of your SAT. Where do you stand among all students who took the test? So basically this is asking you what is your percentile? So again using this, so I'm gonna again try and use the pen again, sorry. So the mean is 500 and the standard deviation is 100. So 100 plus 500 is 600 and because I'm terrible at the pen I'm actually just going to go ahead and stop here because that's the value I'm interested in. So you earn a 600 on one part of your SAT. So we're looking to figure out, okay, so what percentile is this? So percentile means that you did better than everybody below that percent. So I'm, again, looking for all of this area here. So this is going to be the 68%. And then again, that's the middle. There's 32% left over out of total. Half of 32 is 16. So on either side of this 68, we have... 16. It's a terrible six. So to find what percentile you are, that is all of this up to that cutoff value. So you have the 16% plus the 68%. So your percentile is going to be 84%. Again, I apologize for my pen. Not good at using it. That's all I have for tonight. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great night.